They strapped us down with hand grips, leather straps, strapped across my chest, legs up in stirrups, strapped down. That's in the delivery room. It took a day to get there, but um, yeah, after I had my first baby, I decided I didn't want to do that again. There had to be a better way or all, people would have only had one kid. What year was that? 1967. We are two women, Jana and Katie, empowering women to experience new life as Yema Mamas. We are friends sharing our own lives and learning through childbirth, motherhood, singleness, and womanhood to empower you to discover joy and spiritual well-being in all of life. You are a woman created for wholeness. So my name's Mary Bernabe, and I live in Washington State, and I am... What am I? I help ladies have babies at home. I'm not supposed to call myself a midwife because I'm not licensed by the state of Washington. And so I don't call, I'm not a midwife. I'm a birth attendant. <laughs> and, uh, and a childbirth educator and what else? What else am I? I'm a mom and uh, a grandma and a great grandma. And uh, I got to help my grandkids get born and my great grandkids. And that's really fun. Well, I had my first baby in 1967. It was a typical knock them out, drag them out birth. They strapped us down with hand grips, leather straps, strapped across my chest, legs up in stirrups, strapped down. That's in the delivery room. It took a day to get there, but. Um, yeah, after I had my first baby, I decided I didn't want to do that again. There had to be a better way or all, people would have only had one kid. What year was that? 1967. So, <clears throat> I was really scared to get pregnant again because of all that. It was really traumatic. And um, when I got pregnant the second time, it was five and a half years later. And... Um, my friend convinced me to go to some birth classes, which I thought was crazy, but I went. And it turned out that it was great. They were Bradley classes. Everything worked great. I learned how to help myself. Uh, the whole fear, tension, pain cycle that Dr. Grantley Dick Reed talks about. Um, I learned that the more you know, the less fearful you are. The less fearful you are, the less pain you have, the easier it is. So I did that with an 18-hour labor, okay. and um, it worked, and I was so pumped. I thought, man, i got to tell other people about this. So I became a Bradley instructor, and through doing that, started attending births with people as kind of like a doula now. You would call them a doula. Um, or I would take photographs, whatever. And uh, mostly hospital births, but then I got hooked into home births. And I thought, no, this is the way to go. <laughs> so I met a lady who was a midwife, but in California, the midwives couldn't deliver the babies. Um, they could only be like a doula. At and the what birth. year was that? That was 73. Yeah. Um, and there were a few doctors that were doing home births, but they didn't take insurance and it, you had to pay cash, so it was expensive. Um, but it was great, you know, they helped a lot of people and I got um, exposed to home birth. And then when we moved to Washington, I started up teaching classes and met other midwives and heard of a school in Portland. I went to school for a year and um, apprenticed with another midwife for a year after that, and then started doing births on my own. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So what year did you become a midwife on your own? Uh, 78, 1978. And you were still in California? No, I was here. Oh, you moved to Washington. <clears throat> yeah, I was in Washington. And, um, but I had attended births in California. So I started my birth journey there in 72. So. so then 
what would you say is the biggest problem facing childbirth today? And how do you believe that we can solve that? Wow. <laughs> what, in, the, in the early 70s, when things started to change in the birth scene, women would find a doctor that would allow them, I hate that word, but that's what it was then, mm -hmm. would allow them to do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. No medication, no episiotomy, no routine IVs. Um, <clears throat> what else? Um, rooming in, there was no rooming in. You had your baby, they took it to the nursery, and you got it every four hours to feed. So rooming in was big. They wanted to room in with their babies. So um, nobody had insurance then. And you paid to have your baby. And things weren't as expensive as they are now, as far as birth. But people still had to pay for it. So when you found a doctor that um, would let you do what you wanted to do, that's where you went. And so word got out, hey, if you go over here, this hospital and this doctor, you can do all these things. Mm -hmm. And so everybody would flock to this doctor mm -hmm. and this hospital, which made all the other doctors and hospitals sit up and take notice. And so they made changes. They started offering rooming in, fathers in the delivery room, because at that time there was no fathers in the delivery room. Um, no IVs, no, you know, no routine episiotomies. So I think today one of the biggest problems in the birth world is that women don't have any power because most people either have their births paid for by insurance or on state insurance. Very, very few people pay cash for having a baby. So, you know, the going rate here is about fifteen to $18,000 for a normal vaginal birth, you know, with a one or two day stay in the hospital. And a cesarean is way more. So it's pretty unaffordable. But insurances have jacked up the prices. And so I feel like we don't have any power to, to make them change because we can't take our money elsewhere. You know, um, a lot of insurance companies dictate how you can have your baby, if you can have a VBAC, you know, if you can have a vaginal breach. Um, if you can have vaginal twins, if you go over two weeks, you know. Um, so it's usually hospital policy or insurance companies that are deciding how women have babies. And so I think we've lost our, or we haven't lost it, we've given it away, our power to make change. So that's my biggest gripe with how things are now. We don't have... Um, um, the buying power, you know, as a, as consumers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't buy a pair of shoes that you hated, that hurt your feet. You know, why do we let hospitals and insurance companies tell us how to have our babies? Mm -hmm. I don't, I, it just doesn't seem right to me. Um, as far as what to do about it, I don't know, because unless you stay home, you know, I mean, women can have a voice by doing that, staying home. But even then, um, like the state hardly pays for a home birth. Um, and insurance companies, a lot of them won't cover it. More and more are, but not like they should. So I don't know. But I think, you know, we need to take that back. Mm hmm I don't know exactly how to do that, but except by, you know, maybe choosing home birth mm -hmm. and paying out of pocket. I mean, it's not, I mean, I think it's affordable. For home? Yeah, to stay at home. Which, what is the range at home? You, you gave the range for hospital. Yeah, um, it depends where you live in the country. Um, in this area, the Portland, Vancouver area, it's probably 3,500. Portland is probably like 45 or 48. Um, it depends if midwives are licensed and need to carry malpractice insurance or if they're unlicensed. Um, 
you know, but it's it's doable. I mean, look at what we spend money on. Smartphones and all kinds of goodies, you know. Right, a thousand dollars for an iPhone. Yeah. You know, we aren't willing to spend a thousand dollars on a bird. I know. <laughs> and really, I think people put more effort into buying a car and researching the kind of car they want than how they want to have a baby. Yeah. So it's yeah, but it's doable. That's good. So um, for like parents who are looking for information mm -hmm. online and learning about birth and midwifery and um, just what their options are, mm -hmm. what whatever they can learn online, what word of wisdom would you give to expecting moms and dads who are trying to figure out what they want to do for their birth? Um, read everything you can. There's great books. Um, I love books, so I tend to go towards books instead of online stuff. The smell of a book is just great when you open it up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's some really good books. Um, some of the old ones are really good. Grantley Dick Reed, Dr. Bradley's book. Um, you know, Lester Hazel. Um, there's all kinds of good authors. Ina May, Guide to Childbirth. Um, but I would recommend that people go to really good out of hospital classes, childbirth classes. You want to get an independent teacher, one that doesn't have any ties to a doctor or a hospital that um, you can get into classes with. And I like Bradley because it's easy to do and um, that's my background, you know. So that's what I would recommend people do and talk to people. Word of mouth is great. Talk mm -hmm. to people that are having babies and ask them <clears throat> what they liked, what they didn't like, mm -hmm. um, things like that. I have an extra question. Okay. <laughs> um, so I know you do twins and VBAC uh -huh. and um, breech birth, uh -huh. which a lot of people including home birth midwives mm -hmm. are scared to do mm -hmm. scared to do mm -hmm. um and doctors are scared to do them at the hospital mm -hmm. why aren't you afraid of it <laughs> well i can't say that i would do every breach at home or every twin birth at home or you know it i like to look at the situation the people baby's position you know i i kind of judge it individually instead of making a blanket statement um, <clears throat> I'm not afraid of it because I'm not afraid of birth. Birth is normal and natural. Your body's designed to do it. God designed it that way. Um, he didn't mess up on the design. We interfere too much and we make it scary and we make it painful and we make it, um, abnormal. I mean, we don't go to the doctor or the hospital to eat dinner digest our food, you know, why, I mean, that's a normal, natural thing, eating mm -hmm. food, you know, it nourishes your body, same thing with birth, mm -hmm. it's normal, um, you're not sick, it's not a medical event, it's not a surgical event, that doesn't mean that sometimes people have trouble and, you know, need surgery, that's, that's a good thing, that hospitals are there when you need them, but we shouldn't um, need them that often, you can't tell me that 40% women need surgery to have a baby. I just, I don't believe that yet. That's the statistics. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we're doing something to cause that. Yeah. Um, and I'm not afraid of birth. I don't, I don't function out of fear. I don't think fear is a good reason or a good way to make a decision about anything. Um, I think people should make an educated choice. And you educate yourself by reading and talking to people and doing research. Um, so um, did, that's why I'm not afraid of it. Did you ever make a conscious decision to do like VBACs and twins or breach? Or what did it just come to you and you just did it? Well, when I started in the early 70s, nobody was induced for being overdue. Nobody had a cesarean just because your baby was breech or you had twins. So in my head, I think, oh, what changed? You know, how come all of a sudden 
women can't have breeches vaginally or twins or whatever. <clears throat> and it's not that women changed. It's, it's the way the thinking has changed with medical training. And doctors are not taught anymore to do that. And so they don't. They're taught surgery. I mean, would you go to a surgeon for a cold? You know, no, you go to a surgeon for surgery. Well, that's what OBGYNs are. They're surgeons, mm -hmm. you know, and they do surgery. So that's what you're going to get pretty much, you know. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people need surgery, and uh, and they should get that, but only if you need it. But to start out there, I think, is not a good way to do it. So, and I think people are afraid, and we need to not be afraid of something like that. Birth is normal. So. Cool. <laughs> Great. Do you have any other things that you want to tell people in the world? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> trust birth. Trust yourself. Enjoy it. You only get to have so many babies in your life. You might as well enjoy the experience, you know. Yeah. It shouldn't be a scary, ugly experience, you know. It should be good. Awesome. So. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome.